Hi, Tiffany. Hi, Jane. Great to see you tonight. We are the second to last conversation, so we, if we can hold it together, okay, we'll be handing energy. off the final baton and <laughs> okay. everybody will win. So it's a great responsibility for us. So um, you were just talking about systems and connectivity, and I've been wanting to ask you a question for a while, which is that connected is a very big idea to, to make a movie about. And I was wondering, how did you find yourself making a movie about such a big idea. Did you start with that idea? Did it come to you? Uh, so this film, which I just finished two days ago um, for the rough cuts, I'm like, <laughs> um, it used to be called A Declaration of Interdependence. And, you know, thinking about interdependence and kind of bringing back interdependence as a way of thought, which is really systems thinking, which is what we've been talking about. And then it really, so much of it is shaped today about technology and just how that word connected is such a vernacular, like, oh, let's connect, are we connected? And um, so it really, um, and then it took on my father, who's a writer, Leonard Schlein, was co-writing it um, with my husband and I and my writing team. And then he started dying of brain cancer in the middle of uh, making the film. So then it also took on emotional connection and what does that mean? So the word connected it just feels like what everything is about. And certainly what the film has become. Although the taglines changed, it used to be connected, a declaration of interdependence. And now because it has this autobiographical strand in it, we're, we're trying out connected and autoblogography about life, death, and the pursuit of technology. I want but, to make sure I heard that right. Autoblogography. <laughs> We're trying to. Excellent. Uh, but we keep changing the tagline, but we'll see. I like that. And I mean, you have a new book. Oh, I do have a new book. And it's, um, it's not a book you have to read in the sunshine, um, as one of Paul's readers might say. <laughs> um, it's an optimistic book about the future. Really? With the title? Like, would you, is oh, the well, title the, still? The title like? is, it sounds not optimistic. The title is Reality is Broken. Um, right. I would think you would need to right. read that in the sunshine. Right. <laughs> right. Well, because I'm a game designer, and compared to games, reality okay. is completely, okay. completely broken. So um, what's the tagline for that? The, the, the subtitle is uh, Why Games Make Us Better and How They Can Change the World. And that's really, I'm looking at the sort of generation that we have now where the average young person, um, not only in the U.S., but, but in about, uh, in at least 20 other countries, will have amassed 10,000 hours of playing video games by the time they're 21, which, speaking of Malcolm Gladwell, another great Gladwell <laughs> They classic. made it to 10,000 hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 10,000 hours. They're going to be virtuosos at, at gaming, and it seems to me like that's actually an amazing human resource um, that, that we have we're going to have, right now, we have 500 million people who play at least an hour a day in an online game, um, and all these young people who are... No, this is like the cross-pollination of ideas. I mean, that's, yeah. the, that's the part we're at the beginning of. Yeah. If you can just channel that time and energy and creativity that they're online for whatever, towards some solving some problem. I mean, yes. that's when it gets incredibly exciting. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we're trying, uh, so I make games, and uh, I work with a lot of organizations, like big organizations, like the World Bank Institute, the American Heart Association, right. trying to get gamers to use like a very particular skill that they have, which is this uh, desire for an epic win. Uh, so like an epic win is an outcome that's so positive it would have seemed ridiculous until you're right on the verge of achieving it, right? Nobody would have believed it was possible. But gamers are really good at that. They'll like us keep failing and failing and failing and hang in there and they're creative the and optimistic. The ultimate entrepreneur. They'll just yeah. fail, fail. To well, the, yeah, ultimate entrepreneur, ultimate optimist. And so we're trying to figure out, like, can we get people to have that sense of epic win about the real future, not just about virtual worlds, but like what they're capable of. Um, and uh, so actually, well, that reminded me of something that you sent out in uh, your newsletter, your wonderful newsletter, um, where you were talking about uh, the new sunshot that NASA is going to I know, I can't believe they didn't, I was dying to hear him talk about the, uh, yeah. <laughs> they've just said they're going to do a trip to the sun, and I thought that was so, well, like Icarus, Ic Ic I was going to try to make up, like, what is the equivalent of us trying to go to the sun, which is so... Yeah. Right. I mean, logistically, I still don't quite understand how exactly that will work. But right. I was, I was thinking when you brought it up, and like first there was the moonshot, and now we're going to have the sunshot, sunshot to yeah. inspire this kind of epic wind thinking. So I was wondering, in filmmaking, 
Is there, I mean, have you heard of a, a sunshot or a moonshot? What, what could filmmakers do in the next 10 or 50 years that would be that, that big of a step forward into well, the future? The film used to be such an expensive craft that it was this really, um, you know, only few people did it. It was so expensive and, only, and there was so few gatekeepers that decided who make films. So to be alive today when the democratization of the equipment, and, the, and my films are mostly archival and animation, so for me it's like a kid in the candy store with like the amount of footage I'm able to gleam that's on the internet. My fantasy is like everything on YouTube is high res and creative commons and you can just be mashing up every aspect of culture into something new. So to, I guess it comes back to what we were talking about earlier, um, the collaborative aspect Film is ultimately collaborative. I mean, I'm making Connected with my husband, Ken, and I was doing it with my father, and I've got a great team of like eight people. It's so collaborative, so if you scale that outward, that's so exciting. Yeah. Collaborative filmmaking with people from other countries and adding footage, and we're all uploading it online, and you know, they have all these collaborative tools now where you can be editing in real time with other people. I do that with my art director in, in Portland, and it's, the tools are there. The people are going to be online, so I guess the epic win would if we ma really made like a global film. Like I don't know how many people that would entail, but um, there's a couple experiments right now um, where people were asked to upload footage from all over the world, and Sundance is doing it. There's another one that just happened, um, but I, that, that's very that's the ultimate extension of collaboration for filmmaking. Yeah, yeah, okay, so now I'm gonna, that's what my brain will, will muse on now, is like, what is that epic one film, and how, like, how long would it have to be, what would it be about? Like, I love the have... term, the epic win, it's yeah, so, yeah. like, male game, I mean, like, epic, uh, I don't know, it feels, male. it feels to be like an epic win, I don't know, my yeah. brother used to wear that epic in high school all the time, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. oh, you're, I mean, you're trying to get that heart, of, like, there's something like, there's an irrational, mythic quality, um, right, the game. warrior, yeah, the epic, winning, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. But you're, you're doing some of the collaboration, like that kind of global creativity sourcing with yeah, the yeah. movie, right? Yeah, we're doing, we, we're doing this experiment. We've done a lot of, I'm really, in, I just feel like me and my team were like throwing spaghetti against the like receding wall of the web. We're just trying to do all these experiments with, um, we did this thing at the commencement speech where we asked people to upload their ideas of the future. Um, from all over the world, graduates from all over the world. Um, and then we're doing this experiment now, we're asking uh, designers from all over to design the movie poster based on some images from it. So yeah, we're really into this kind of cross-pollination of ideas from different places and how the web can facilitate that. That's super cool. Okay, yeah. so now we have we've to got do a game together. We've well, I was gonna to say, okay, so game designer, internet connect connected yeah. media guru. We're gonna so, do something together. Well, but now, we have a few minutes, at least, I'm sure, to do to something. To figure out what right we're going to do. Uh, okay. 10 minutes. This is fantastic. Okay, we can work right. it all out in so, 10 minutes. Well, here's actually, so I was thinking, um, so, you know, being here today throughout the long conversation and thinking about how amazing these two chairs are and interesting people come up and they go out. And I was thinking, like, what if we could do some big connected version of this or some big game? Like, could we put two chairs in public? and see if we could, how long could we keep a conversation going? And I was thinking the rule would be that once you sit down, you can't get up, you have to stay in conversation with somebody until someone comes to take your place. And we could see how long we could keep you know, a conversation time, going. Uh, I love this idea. And one time Ken and I went to Burning Man, and we were out in the middle of nowhere on the playa, and we saw this guy beating this drum, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and we went up to him, and he's like, oh, I'm so glad you're here. Now I can go. <laughs> <laughs> we were there for a really long time. Is that right? <laughs> so I could almost see um, yeah, yeah. this long conversation. <laughs> like, so be like, oh, I'm so glad you came here. Yeah, yeah. But um, I like that idea of... You could like stream it. You stream it. Clock. So there's some kind of video component where people are watching because when yeah. people are watching, they're not going to get up from the chair. Right, well... Right. Right. Well, what about this component? As the conversation is happening, you've got some video jockeys online mm -hmm. who are linking to relevant visuals to go nice. with what they're talking so about. So we could have pictures of Burning Man now, pictures of... <laughs> you could be hyperlinking out yeah, yeah. to other kind of systems that require people not to get up or, you know, other... Vi you know, so there'd be kind of visual, visual jockeys on YouTube or 
calling up videos that have to do with the conversation so it's visually stimulating also. Yeah, because it seems like it could be a useful thing. I mean, to, to sit down across from somebody, I mean, we're doing this kind of like little mini experiment where I think most people haven't over-prepared, we're just gonna, we assume that we're all thinking big thoughts and we all care about the future, something's gonna come out, right? <laughs> and uh, I love the idea of just taking like random people in the street and they have 20 minutes to have a conversation on the internet in front of everybody. And It like, seems like that oh. feeds in directly to, I mean, the whole, you know, 15 minutes of, this is your intellectual 15, 20 right. minutes, right. <laughs> say it now. Um, Maybe we could bring it down to 15 to sort yeah, of hit just to that, kinda, yeah. that pop I think it could work. I think it'd be interesting. I mean, I think while there's this kind of exhibitionism that certainly is happening, like she said, pornographic information. I thought that was a great way to describe it. But, um, but there's also this beautiful thing, which I think everyone gets to feel like they've got some way to get their perspective heard. I was just looking at this archival image for the movie of all these kids. It looked like a, like a shot from the 70s in the Soviet Union. They're all holding up their paintings. They're like seven years old. And, I was, and they're all proudly showing the painting they did. And I, on some level, you know, that's the ultimate human experience. Everyone wants to say, here I am. Yeah. This is my perspective, and it matters. And I think on some level, that's what the internet is providing, this way for, to, for people to feel like they're heard. And, and I think with the social and internet interest graphs, you know, going to find people with commonality there, too. Yeah. Well, it was really interesting what, what you were saying earlier about the oxytocin yeah. and, uh, and Twitter and how we're, we're feeling more bonded and trusting and more generous, maybe, because of Twitter. I feel that way. So it's the idea of a declaration of interdependence. I mean, do you yeah. think there'll be like a generational I, shift? I do. I, I do. I think that people... Um, I do. I mean, with this new film, we're going to have on our website people to sign a declaration of interdependence. But what is it? What is it? What's what are you gonna declaring? Mean? Yeah. Well, we're going to make it kind of open source. Uh -huh. What does that mean to you? Because it means different things to different people. But we'll do a weekly newsletter that'll give ideas on how you can incorporate interdependent thinking into your life. So it'll be a mix of actual things you can do, things to think about, books to read. Um, but I do think the next generation, um, you know, this kind of idea that power expands the moment you share it, mm -hmm. and on the internet, you know, you're just you're sharing information and and ideas, and that's power. And that's I don't know. I, I guess I I feel like the that there was actually in the in the week in review about three weeks ago. They some I can't remember who did the study, but it was talking about how the internet is opening up more businesses that are based on collaboration, whether it's Zipcar or all these new businesses are starting based on sharing. Yeah, yeah. And I do think that that is born from the web, yeah. and that generosity and what I, you know, this kind of global hits of oxytocin. But see, the thing with oxytocin is when you get a hug, you need to hug for six seconds before the, the rush right? happens. Oh. So I don't know, you have to like be clicky. <laughs> you have to have some connection for long enough to have it hit and everything's getting so short. But um, I do a think- a good th hack, by the way, like six seconds. So when I hug somebody, I should be counting. You gotta be six, waiting six five, seconds to get that four. rush, yeah. That's a really, actually it's a very useful tip. Yeah, well, there you go. You got a little factoid for today, but um, <laughs> but the younger generation, I do, I do think I have a lot of young people on my team, and the way that they think about collaborating is just it's the first thing they think of. Yeah, and do you think that's? I mean, hearing hearing you say that, it, it sounds kind of subversive, and you think the original Declaration of Independence, and there's such a kind of I don't that 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 feeling of like go it alone and I think it's that, your yes. life. It used to be such, I was such a part of our country and you know, I think it's been the human, you know, declare interdependence, we're separate, we're our own. And I, I feel like this moment that we're at is gonna be to be recognizing our interdependence through resources, through knowledge and information, through um, you know, the way that we do business. It, it has to be, it has to be. Yeah. So that to me is the, you know, bringing back systems thinking, I mean, you can't believe how many people, do. I mean, like when Paul was saying, it's the way we're born, I mean, it's this kind of pattern thinking, and we have so much data now, um, and so much computing power that we can finally see these patterns that we never could see before, and so looking for the systems and the patterns, so I, we're only gonna be doing that more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. With your games, I mean, that's about pattern seeking, and. It totally is, no, I, the, the, 
Well, so we just launched a new organization um, called Gameful, which is like playful, but Oh, I thought it was games. gonna be like mindful. Oh, that's better, okay. No, well, no, no, I like play. Mostly because I'm, uh, whenever people hear I make games or, and they see research about they play, think yeah. they think like I'll be excited and I'm totally not excited <laughs> at all because I don't <laughs> like play because play is, um, they well it isn't, uh, the difference between play and games I guess is that games are structured and, um, and have a goal and uh, I'm very interested in sort of the identifying process. these epic win goals so that we can, because they, they seem to motivate a more intense engagement. So, anyway, so we call it a gameful, because we don't really have a word for gameful. that. Gameful. Yeah, like really wholehearted, highly motivated, self-directed, trying to achieve something amazing, right? Which is, I think, is a is Why a do you think game, need. I mean, it's so interesting, because your work to me, goes above game. I mean, it's interesting, the stigma, I mean, words, the power of words, and game, yeah. you know, I do have this framework of what a game is, yeah. and you're really kind of crowdsourcing intelligence with some of your, your games, yeah. whether well, it's world, world Without Oil or like these bigger ideas, so what about changing the word game? Oh gosh, you know, somebody, somebody just asked me that. I was at Stanford this week, and uh, speaking to the sophomore class, and it's this girl, Ask like, how do we get over the bias? What would be a better word than game? And you know, I think we're totally kind of screwed up by the moment in history that we're in, which is that games for the past 30 years have been this digital format. And for maybe 20 of those years, 15 of those years, they were like not collaborative or collective or social. Yeah, I think you got to come up with a new word. No, no, no. If we're using you're games gonna, for thousands reclaim of it? years, no, you're gonna no. reclaim game the and Greeks make sure people know games, the definition. The Mayans had games. I mean, we, that would be stupid to just but have there been abandoned. But did the Mayans? But have there been games for? Okay, yeah. yes, there have been games throughout history, but have there been games that have truly been about solving world social ills or world problems, or have games always been about this kind of? Have there been? I mean, you would know. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, some people would say there's sort of that false story about the Olympics being games to, to create peace, but uh, that wasn't, I guess, historically why they did it. They were, there were other reasons. Um, they didn't actually care about the peace part. That was just to help the games happen. Um, no, no, I think, I think you're right. It's true that we're kind of gaming with a purpose now, or... Um, gaming with a purpose isn't yeah. a sexy, but... Yeah. It's not sexy? Gaming with a purpose. Yeah. No. It needs to be like a, you know, it feels like there's, because you are doing something that's, feel, well, no, I mean, I'm all for reclaiming words and kind of teaching people the new definition. Yeah, well, and part of it is, you know, I'm trying to get young people to feel that they can do something that matters, right? Yeah. If you, uh, there's a great huge study uh, by Pew Internet Life Research Group uh, a couple years ago, 99% of boys under the age of 18 in the U.S., play video games regularly, and 94% of girls do, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a generation that, like, that's where their heart is. Mm -hmm. So I want to use the word games because I want them, them to yeah. get involved and then to see that that everything they've learned about collaborating online, everything they've they learned about They can be applied the for the greater good. Yeah, yeah. So so Seems for them, great. the word should work. And for the rest of us, we, we need just, to be we get over it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Excellent. And perhaps with the next year for the next uh, long conversation, we will have chairs out front and we'll see. We'll, we'll do an we'll, experiment For at least live. 24 hours we'll run it, but we will <laughs> enable and empower the players to actually run it as long as they can keep going. Maybe they'll go for a month. It would be pretty epic. I love to it. See well, that always good talking yeah. to you, Jane. Thank you. Thank you.